Okay, guys. Thank you to be here, and you did the first good choice today. This track, it's really, really a great choice. Uh, I have also a demo. I think that we can spend one hour, a really great hour together. Uh, we will speak about time series database and some tick stack. Tick is a acronym for a bunch of tools that we will see during this hour. Uh, a bit about me, I'm Gianluca Arvezzano. I, I'm Italian, but uh, I'm working in Dublin right now. I work in Currency Fair, it's a financial company that uh, make an uh, application to exchange money in different currencies. And I'm a software engineer. Um, Gian Arb is my nickname in Twitter and GitHub. If you have a Twitter account, uh, my bot is tweeting right now during my talk. Uh, I'm just sharing a few information about my talk, some links and some other resources that you can follow. Um, I'm an open source maintainer and contributor. I'm not just a developer. I'm happy to share my experience and to uh, be involved and try to involve people in community. Um, the first logo is the uh, InfluxDB logo. I'm maintainer for the PHP SDK. Uh, Penny, the second one, is a framework that I did to learn something about uh, middleware and uh, PSR7. Uh, we had a uh, talk about PSR7 today, and I was looking around to understand how it works. It was working. Um, I'm a maintainer of integration between Doctrine and the framework and VimPHP because uh, I'm happy to be live really, really hard, and uh, usually I use Vim. For this reason, if you, have, uh, if you are a PHP developer and also Vim user, maybe we can try to be crap together. Uh, last project that I started is uh, scaledocker.com. It's an ebook. I'm part of the Docker Captain. Uh, it's a group of people selected to share experience uh, that they have with Docker. Uh, this is my way to share what I know uh, an ebook about Docker and orchestration. Um, there is a site, and you can leave your email. During the afternoon, I will extract one lucky uh, person that will receive a special gift. Leave your email to stay in touch with me. OK, finish of the Harvard advertising part. Now we can speak about time series. Um, this is a really great like, bunch of words. Uh, my, uh, one of my colleagues had another part is uh, try again, file again, file better, and file faster. Because it's, we cannot fail each time in the same way. We need to be really, really uh, fast to fail more. And for this reason, what we need is like trust our system. Um, how can we trust our system? There are a lot of people that just trust themselves. Um, we need to be like pretty much like them because, you know, it's hard to understand what's happening in our application. Our application usually grow. Usually, uh, we have a lot of deploy because we have continuous delivery. Um, we work a lot, uh, and how can we be? How can we have a really good feeling about what we are doing and what our application is like doing for us? One way, and it's the best tool that usually I see in a company, is this command. A lot of people follow what's happening in their application with tail, uh, f, and haplog. It's really, really great. Uh, it's like a CLI tool, really easy to use. and. You can just yeah follow what's happening in your monitor. If your tail is really really slow, maybe something is not going really really well. If it's really really fast, you have other kind of problem. Uh, if it's quite stable or if you like the tail, okay, all it's all it's really fun. But to do that, you need a demon. You need also it's not just a tail. There is like a demon that follow this like screen and try to understand what's happened. This demon is a really great application. It's like this. And there is like this demon that it's in front of the monitor and look, 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 and try to figure out what's happened. Um, this is a really, really great and basic monitoring system that we usually use. What the demon follow is something like this. This is a Nginx log. And when, we, when he figures out something like this, we have a problem, and we need to investigate more about what's happening in our application. The log is usually really expensive to store. 
Uh, there are a lot of ways to resolve log, ro log rotation. You can move your stuff in S3 after a while, but usually it's a long file that you need to store in some way and to backup in some other way. It's difficult to index uh, because it's usually verbose and there are a lot of information. Our daemon is really, really smart and yeah, he can figure out what's happened, but for a machine it's not like easy. It's difficult, but not really impossible. We have a lot of tools that help us to resolve this problem, to address this issue. Uh, Elasticsearch is one. We have uh, log entries, log stash, uh, and really a lot of other. I think that uh, some of you use uh, something different to address and manage logs. But logs are good. Are good for extract information, because we already saw that they contain a lot of information about our application. Uh, they are human readable. Our daemon is like really focused and can understand what's happened, but it's a human. And a lot of other stuff I think that they have, uh, you have your personal bullet point about. But we are here to speak about time series. And why? Because if you try to reduce your log in just a timestamp and a value, that could be an integer or float or uh, what else, you are like a really great information about your system, really easy to store and to manage. This is an example of time series. Um, we have a name for our time series, is log lines. We have two columns, one line, one time that is timestamp and uh, line is like our log. This is an example. Time series doesn't exclude logs and vice versa, but they can stay together and help you to understand the behavior of your application. Another example is really, really easy and is the CPU. Um, this is the value of the CPU. You have the name of your time series, uh, CPU percent usage, and uh, just one column that is a value. It's 40. Each point has a time, time because it time series is a time series, and each point has a time. There are really a lot of, if you think about your application, there are a lot of stuff that you can convert uh, and manage with time series. You can manage time uh, page view, because each view that your application has is a new point with value one, and you can sum and create difference and create complex query to understand what's happened. If you think about mm, temperature sensor or a lot of IoT application are really uh, great, works really great with uh, time series because like uh, if you are trying to get, uh, catch temperatures in your home, usually you have a time and you have a amount of temperature and it's, this is another time, uh, time series. And yeah, really it's um, easy, it's really the key of uh, time series because it's easy to do something complex, it's easy to do something that Usually we do something that grow, 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 but when, you, when, we, when we can resolve a problem in a really easy way, maybe we catch a really good solution. Time is also perfect to shard a big data set because time is like a really good uh, sharding key. You can just put in uh, one file uh, all point that you have in uh, all point that you collect in one day or two day or one month depends on the number of points that you usually collect but it's really simple you can just use different file and read that file when you need to get data time series is not something new um, we have already some solution for that prometheus is the first logo and it's one of them New Relic, uh, um, Pr Prometheus is an op is a open source tool also, and it's a time series database. New Relic uh, is a platform as a service. InfluxDB is another time series database, and Elasticsearch and really other other tools. InfluxDB, we are here to speak about InfluxDB and, and all stack that they provide. InfluxDB is an um, open source project. Uh, it's uh, in Go, and it's optimized to store time series data. And for this reason, I really like this kind of tool because <coughs> now we have something that helps us to storage in a really, really good way time series. 
there is a big community uh, around this tool and a lot of other applications that use this tool to collect and manage time series. It's really, really easy to use. You can just get uh, your compiled uh, version installing your system, and with the third uh, line, you can just start uh, your server. When you start your InfluxDB server, you have three main features. You have a HTTP API. Uh, you have a UDP support. Uh, with, a H the, with the API, you can speak over HTTP. With the UDP connection, you can speak over UDP. We will see the difference later. And you have an admin panel that it's really great to like look around what's happening in our database. The API are default in 8086, and the admin panel default in 8083. InfluxDB is uh, SQL-like. It means that you can use a, syn a SQL syntax to write query. That is also really great, because you don't, know you don't need to um, learn something different. It's something that a lot of people already know. And this is an example. You are, select, uh, you are selecting a value from the CPU load short um, measurement. In this case, it's not table map measurement. And uh, you are doing a where for region. OK. I have something for you. But you need to be really motivated, because I have only three. And you are a lot of people. And I have not for every one of you. Okay. Good man. Good, good, really. They are the InfluxDB t shirt. It's not something like really excited, but. Oh, in, sorry, in the end of the room, I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> I can try with the last one, but I don't think that. I can arrive that well I can do some like <laughs> Okay It was just a short break Okay that's the idea When you work with InfluxDB you have a InfluxDB database that it's in the uh we have also a lot of uh, container or a lot of uh, virtual machine. Uh, each virtual machine have a telegraph agent. We will see what is telegraph, but imagine uh, telegraph is a collector for time series. It stay in uh, each server because you can speak with them and uh, delegate uh, telegraph to push uh, metrics in InfluxDB. Uh, it's useful to uh, resolve uh, latency issue. And you have your service, your application, and your stuff that works in, uh, that runs, that run in a um, virtual machine. That's what you have. Uh, this is a graph that uh, Influx provide for us, because mine was not great like this. I decided to use also this. We have a InfluxDB here. Uh, we have uh, we can have a chronograph. Chronograph is a um, uh, dashboard visualization. In my demo, we will use graf uh, Grafana, but you can use uh, what you want. You have your tools with the with the Telegram the Telegraph agent installed, and also we will see how it works. Capacitor. Capacitor is the, a tool that uh, look in InfluxDB and trigger some notification when there is some behavior that you need to well take care like a lot of traffic on your uh, application that you need to manage the um, when you write a point uh, in InfluxDB, you are uh, you will use uh, inline protocol that it's a protocol optimized for time series and for a big bunch of insert because usually you have a lot of point to store and they started with G uh, JSON but was after a while they was really 
hard to use because uh, require it's verbose. It's easy to read, but it's verbose. In line, it's like uh, hard to read, maybe, but mm, it's less expensive in terms of bandwidth or other stuff. Usually, there is the name of the measurement temperature in our case, and there are a list of uh, tags or field. Uh, there is a difference between between tag and field. Are uh, they are both key value? You have a key and you have your value, but uh, field are not are not an index into the database, and tag are an index. It means that when you do a where uh, query. If you look for a tag, it's faster than um, for field. But you can do for both. You just know that one is faster than another. And the last parameter is a time series. In InfluxDB, you can omit the, uh, the last parameter. If you don't send time series, InfluxDB put one for you. We also know that InfluxDB support two protocols protocols, UDP and TCP. Why? Because that's the main difference. The first line is uh, HTTP. Uh, we try to send uh, 1,000 points in uh, HTTP and 1,000 in UDP. That's the difference. The average the in HTTP is more expensive and slow. But we know that. Uh, it's important to know and understand what we can use. For example, if you can lost some point, maybe you can use UDP. Or we know that exists um, Telegraph that is this agent that you can run in your um, virtual machine. When, you, when your application speak with uh, Telegraph, you can speak in UDP because you are in, your, in the same virtual machine and traffic inside is not like really hate and it's hard to lose data in the same machine. Uh, Telegraph will send in TCP point in InfluxDB in order to have like, in order to be really, really sure that point are in the database because uh, the main difference between UDP and TCP is that with UDP you don't know if the point are, if the, your request uh, is mm, going well or not. InfluxDB supports all continuous query. Continuous query are a way that you have to, that InfluxDB provides to listen and stream data. You can use uh, capacitor, use continuous query to trigger something when uh, there is something wrong. And you can use the row feature continuous query to do your little application, little notification center if you don't need to use capacitor or if you need to resolve a specific issue. Telegraph is collector um, it's made of plugin they had they he has it has a lot of plugin to receive data it can collect data from nginx apache php uh, rabbitmq really a lot of plugin and you can wrote your you can write your plugin and also a lot of um, Output plugin because it's not just for InfluxDB, but you can store data that you collect uh, in uh, uh, watchlog, uh, watchlog, that is the AWS monitoring system. You can use Graphite, you can use, uh, mm, there are a lot of plugins. I have a screenshot here. Um, yeah, you can, like in input, you can use, um, you, you can monitor, you can collect data from uh, Apache uh, uh, C group. CoachDB, MySQL, file system, CPU, memory, and you can store data in Kafka, Kinesis, uh, MQTT, OpenTSDB, Prometheus also. It's, it's open source and they are trying to support a lot of things. Capacitor is the last piece of our stack. It's the trigger notification center. You can describe uh, what you need to follow and capacitor just uh, follow your input data and trigger you on different channel when uh, something happen. You can write uh, something in a log, in a log file, but you can also use Slack and ping someone on Slack. Page duty to like trigger your um, people that something is wrong. Um, Ip chat and really a lot of other output. It's, it's a framework uh, and there is a proper language to describe 
how follow something and what trigger when and when. This is a, an example. We are creating a stream from a measurement is a CPU usage uh, idle and group for host in order to have a vision for specific host because we need to understand which uh, server has a problem. Windows is a range of time, uh, follow for one minute every minute. Um, and also the, you have all a new uh, function and alert when uh, uh, yeah, when the CPU is more, the CPU user is more than 17 and 85. You trigger a message on Slack in this case, on Slack in that channel and also in pager duty. If uh, there are a lot, really a lot of integration and it's really, really flexible. Okay. Now. Lucky time. Okay, what I'm doing now, it's, yep, thank you. Okay. I started a InfluxDB server and what we can where is Chrome? We can see that we have a proper dashboard. This is the uh, port 8083, it's the admin panel of InfluxDB. We have also in 8086, 80, we have a API. Uh, API server that is listening. We have a list of database. InfluxDB monitor, monitor themselves with InfluxDB. Uh, it means that we have already some uh, stuff to watch inside. We can like show all databases that we have. In this case, just one internal. We can show the measurements inside a uh, database because there is this menu that the contains all uh, database we just selected internal measurements are like table for mm, mysql or for other database we can for example see select uh, all uh, measurement from httpd that is the counts the number of queries that we uh, are doing and other stuff that come from the api uh, order by time and that's the result we have a time series each line is, is a point that has a time and uh, all information key value information that we need in this case for example we can follow mm, the number of requests that is really easy what we can do it's like uh, well, the admin panel is really useful for debug or for look in InfluxDB, but it's not something that you can use to create dashboard or to like monitoring stuff because it's not uh, written to do that. But we have a other tools that we can use. I'm starting a graphite um, dashboard. Graphite is a uh, gra Grafana, sorry. Grafana is a um, dashboard manager. You can use Grafana to create dashboard for a lot of uh, uh, input data. You can use that for uh, graf uh, Graphite, that is another mm, time series database. You can use them for um, Prometheus, for InfluxDB, and there are a lot of sources that you can use. We can catch Graphite in 300 port, we have a login to do, and this is a new, like, new uh, Grafana server. We can create dashboard, add row in this resolution. Okay, there is a red 
button here that we can use to create and add new graph. But before add a new graph, you need to add your data source. Our data source is like uh, internal because it works with the internal DB. It's just a name. Source is InfluxDB. And we can see that you can create a dashboard for CloudWatch, Elasticsearch, Graphite, InfluxDB, Prometheus, and other. But today we are working with InfluxDB. You need to put your API and the database that you are working. OK, data source is working. Perfect. We can go to create our dashboard. New graph. I have read me with some utilities. I have a query in some place. Yep. Graphite has a good integration with uh, InfluxDB. You can like ch uh, choose your source internal, and you can type query with this utility. But there is also a row input filter I uh, input that you can use. In this case, we are selecting um, the difference between. <laughs> um, between two points in the range of 10 seconds. And uh, in this way, what, we are, what we, I'm trying to do is understand um, how many requests uh, we have in 10 seconds on our InfluxDB. And it's working because there is something that we can see. We, can ha we have a zoom feature to like, understand what's happening at a particular point. We can see a spike here because Graphite is using InfluxDB and InfluxDB has more uh, requests to solve and it's something that HTTPD measurement is uh, looking. And uh, what we can also try to do is do a simple curl, uh, C curl to insert a new data. I have one here. What we have is like, a, it's a post in our InfluxDB. In my case, the is um, we are write. It's a write to a new DB. It's the get matter. Just to don't use in, in, internal. It's just for InfluxDB. You need to create your own. If we try to like store this data. I forget something. Yeah. What you can see is that uh, data binary is the content of our body, uh, our request. And it's like load time is the name of the measurement. Uh, and we have a key value store uh, and a value, it's the like. It's it's uh, we we can use that like for CPU number, I don't know if the amount of um, is the percent of CPU that we are using. It's just a simulation. We receive a, for, a 404 not found because our database is not found because we uh, we I forgot to create database and we go to we need to go into the admin panel and do like create database get match. And now we have our database and we can store data and we can see that we have like we received 204 no content that it's good because we have something inside we can also use select from we need to change our database because now we are working with get met, uh, metrics from uh, the name of the measurement is load time Load time. And here we have list of points that we insert. What we can do, for example, we can create a graph like this, but gra um, 
graphite allow us to grafana allow us to create other stuff like a table we can just oh we need to add a new data source because data source works with the um, work with the database we change database and we need to add the new data source add new data source influence the beer name is get match all good we have a new data source we can go back to in our dashboard and modify our graph get match and we have a table with our data that we can follow now what we can also do we can start a uh, um, telegraph agent we can start I'm just using docker because it's easy to use but you can do everything imagine that you are creating a new server and you are put an you are putting an agent into the server what we can see is that telegraph is up and uh, after there is a configuration that I can show you this is a configuration for telegraph you can configure each agent uh, uh, with for example different name or different tags when the, the tags is part of the measurement is part of the point for each point that come from this um, agent there are uh, DC that is data center um, tags in this way you can grab and order data for uh, data center and manage a different data center there is also a out output plugin the uh, output chapter that you can use to configure your plug output plugin in my case it's InfluxDB because all point that uh, telegraph collect uh, need to be uh, send sent to um, InfluxDB. You can also configure your inputs plugin. In this case, I just used one, that's it's, uh, the CPU one. Each plugin has the own configuration. You need to understand which is for you, fit for your use case. And if we com come back to our telegraph, we can see that uh, he's sending uh, metrics like the last line is uh, 20 metrics and he just uh, communicate in InfluxDB all data that he's grabbing from our system uh, if there if you are using a uh, TCP to communicate with InfluxDB that is something that we are doing uh, telegraph is also also know is something go wrong during the uh, request and he try each seconds if the first request is not going well after few requests is just uh, uh, like logs that there is a problem with your InfluxDB because he cannot reach them but for three five on it's a configuration parameter it retries okay now we can see in our get metrics that there are show measurement there are more than one measurement we mm, use CUR to create a lot of time and insert data into the lot time but now we have CPU CPU is the measurement that telegraph is using to collect data from our CPU if you don't trust me we can uh, you are free to, do, to don't trust me um, uh, but I can show you something like CPU and we have a list of points with the like a lot like few um, parameters for our CPU in our system for example the usage 
handle or the IO weight usage, and we have a parameter with the current status of our um, CPU. But another time, this is this is not a good way to monitoring our system. We can also create a dashboard, and I have a qu I have a query stored for this. We can go to Graphite and create like new graph. And uh, hmm. We can try to use the query builder that Graphite provides. We are selecting the CPU measurement. It field is uh, usage idle. And we are adding a mass function. And that's it. Why? Okay, and we have like our current CPU in our container. We can see that our container is doing really nothing, and our CPU is like one. Uh, it says CPU percent usage, and we have like one percent of CPU usage. But we can try to kill our CPU, and uh, with a simple bash profile, well bash uh, command, we can log in inside. Uh, Um, we are in our capacitor um, container and we can try to kill our CPU with a while through and see what's happened. If my, um, okay, we can see that there is a spike because our while through is working really well and it's killing my MacBook. Now I need to stop them. Um, I stop the command and we can see that like CPU is normal now. In this is a good example and uh, what we need to do to trust our system is receive a notification when something is really, really wrong. Like uh, we have a spike of CPU is 100% uh, of CPU usage. This is usually a problem when you have an application that work. And when you think about your monitoring system, uh, he need, it need also to well, send you a notification when something is wrong. You can do that with Capacitor. Capacitor is the last um, ser service that we will see today. Docker, Compose, App. Capacitor. Capacitor is up and running. When you describe, for example, we are trying to well understand and monitor, follow our, our CPU. We have a CPU measurement to follow, uh, and we need to have an alert when uh, an alert when you, the u usage from a user is more than seventy percent. And if this happens, we need to. Um, alerts in some way. In this case, just to be really, really, uh, just to do something easy, I'm just uh, adding a new line in a log file. But when we see before, you can just ping someone on Slack uh, on wake up someone in the middle of the night with page duty. To do that, now I'm I'm doing a login inside the capacitor. Capacitor. And
this resolution is not help me. I need to copy piece of command. What we are doing, Capacitor is a CLI application tool that has like a few commands that you can use. There is like record, define, define template, relay, replay, replay live, enable, disable. What we are using now is we are trying to define a new alert, uh, a new tick. The, the, the word that InfluxDB uses tick um, for our CPU that alert us when our CPU is not working really well. We need to, well, capacitor define a CPU usage. And you need to like grab definition of your tick that we saw before is the file that we saw before and this CPU usage tick. And uh, you also need to add uh, DB and retention policy information. DB is get metro, that is the database that we are using to store our um, point. The retention policy, policy is another feature that InfluxDB provide. Uh, you can define for how much time a point need to be stored in InfluxDB. Because usually when you have a system, uh, monitoring system, your, the number of points that you store is like really, really, uh, there are a lot of points. And if you are not really interested to maintain them for all your life, you can just tell InfluxDB that after three months, he can, uh, it can just delete your point. Okay, we are added a capacitor uh, alert. Now we can enable um, CPU usage. And we can see that capacitor list tasks uh, show the list of tasks and uh, we have CPU. Now what we can try to do is go another time in uh, our telegraph. No. <laughs> and we can try to while our to kill my CPU another time. And if we tail TMP alert, no. We can see that there is an alert and this alert contains like all trouble that our CPU is like having. It's a really hard uh, <laughs> Uh, JSON to read, but it contains information about there is a new, like there is a new critical trouble with our specific metrics. But we are not here to speak also about uh, how monitoring a CPU, but InfluxDB provides an API and we can use that API to monitoring everything we want, also our application, and also not just uh, like the number of error that we have, but we can also use this system to um, monitor business um, data. Like, I don't know, the num if your application has a backend uh, and you need to follow the number of login that people do, you can, for example, insert a point each time that uh, your user try to do a login. And uh, in this way, you can like create a graph. And uh, if, uh, if after a deploy, your behavior change, maybe you broke something and you need to revert on fix. Uh, have a good dashboard is a really good way to like follow what's happening in your application. And I have a Symfony application. It's a normal Symfony application, like a really standard application. I just had that uh, in Composer, the InfluxDB SDK. And one we ca what we can do is like create a service and 
InfluxDB has a client that you that has set like parameter like arguments are host and port of your InfluxDB. And you also need to create a database that well communicate InfluxDB with um, your SDK PHP SDK which database uh, which which database work work. And in this case is like uh, in our case is get match because we are working with get get match. And the really basic example that I created, it's like uh, this is the default controller. I just had the uh, right points with the um, with a new page view, and in this way uh, we are like mm, inserting we are inserting a new point when someone click in our uh, well see the our index. And we can see that no. Oh, sorry. No. We have our application. That it's running, and we can also see that for each new view, we have new points. And like the same that we saw, we did for CPU, we can do for this kind of metrics and have an idea about what's happening in our application. We can create alert, and if we know that our system cannot serve more than 1,000 of requests a minute, if we are close this limit. We can just trigger an alert and understand what we do. If we are in a di dynamic environment, maybe we can start a new server. If we are in like static environment, maybe we need to start to pray. I don't know. Uh, do something different. That's it. Uh, I have a couple of slides for you. I uh, this is the link of my demo. It contains uh, all uh, uh, all what you saw, and you can try yourself. Why I like this approach? Because when you start to work uh, with uh, not just microservices, but when you have when you yeah, have a lot of uh, application, when you um, you need to like maybe have a really really good uh, dashboard with uh, all metrics that you need to follow. Because in a distributed environment, you don't know or well you don't usually understand if what's happened it's like the cause the um, the reason is. Your, you have this behavior is just for your application or because your dependency is not working well. If you have a problem with like uh, your web um, front-end application that is using your API, uh, you need to know if the trouble is in your API or in your front-end. And if you ha have a good monitoring system, a good um, setup and good dashboard, you can like compare uh, stuff that you usually don't compare and try to understand if there is a problem and where is the problem and fix them like faster. And for this reason, you also need to do a really, really good das dashboard with good relationship between like your metrics. Why InfluxDB and one not something else? Uh, InfluxDB is doing a lot of like uh, benchmark with other services. This is like one with MongoDB. Uh, you save a lot of uh, disk, and you have also a good like uh, benchmark with uh, the throughput of data that you insert. There are a lot of uh, benchmark with uh, Elasticsearch and Cassandra, and I think that they are provide other benchmarks. That's it. That's, ju that's just a s long series. Uh, it's a s it's a bunch of tools that you can use to create your uh, monitoring system. Um, I like InfluxDB because it's really row, row level, um, and you can just. I think that it's like. Um, you need to be owner of your um, monitoring system because your application speaks and you need to understand what he is trying to uh, communicate with you but it's not easy like uh, it's not all easy we uh, saw a bunch of tools that we can use but uh, uh, your monitoring system need to be up when all your infrastructure is down 
it's like the first requirement. If your infrastructure is down and your monitoring system is not up to notify you, it's a problem. And usually uh, maintain and scale this system uh, require few attention that you need to uh, to think before start this adventure. Thank you. <laughs>